Hey everyone, welcome to another AI conversation. I'm joined today by my uh, esteemed colleague uh, in AAP and recently the successful UST AI Summit, Professor uh, Art Patungan. Hey Art, how are you? Welcome to the show. Hi Doc, good, good evening or good day to the listener and to the viewer. Yeah, it's evening as we're recording this. So, sige, um, well, I don't know, how's, uh, how's everything? I... Uh, la- last we spoke, you were preparing for your for your PhD defense. Kaya na nangyari na ba yon o mangyari pa lang? Uh, mangyari pa lang. Uh, <laughs> cross finger. I have yeah. to talk to my critic at critic reader by next week. Hope Sige. everything will be done this oh. week. <laughs> Tapusin mo na yan para doctor doctor art patungan ka na. Then ano? We can we can start uh, talking about uh, your thesis. <laughs> 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 yeah, but anyway, um, I guess what what the one of the first things in my head was, uh, number one to congratulate you guys for a very successful UST AI summit a couple of weeks back. Um, uh, how's things back after the summit? What was the feedback? Ah, first, uh, thank you to Sir Litix and to you, especially to Doc for, uh, I think. This was the the summit was a conversation last year. Yeah, over, exactly. Over a cup of coffee, then uh, and come dire diretso lang na karon ng sort of training for the faculty. Then here we have. Uh, I think we 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 thought to ourselves that we need to spread the things. Na hindi yeah. pwedeng hindi pwedeng sa university lang. And hindi siya dapat sinosolo lang ng, ng university. So, part of, I think, part na rin ng, ng extension ng university and ng responsibility ng, ng university to spread the things. Especially na lang years na, mag, mag to two years na ang ChatGPT. And yet, yeah, time, uh, time flies. Yeah. yeah. And... And yet, uh, ang mga educational, ang academe, ang higher education, even the basic education are uh, still craving for what shall we do with mm. this generative AI? Mm-hmm. How are we going to, are we going to abo- to refrain from using it or are we going to adopt it? Now, if we're going to adopt, how are we going to adopt? So, yung AI Summit is one of just a venue, an avenue for for us to to educate our com our our, our academic our colleagues from the from the academic to how are we going to go about this generative AI? Because whether we are like it or not, di na to alis. No, no. Uh, I I think with the high spirit, naman yun ng yare after after the summit with, of course, sabi ko nga kay Doc Che nung nag-uusap kami when we are talking kaming dalawa lang sabi ko uh, hindi naman perfect lahat that means we're still human and I think with the with the thing of uh, artificial intelligence that imperfectness is something that we crave for <laughs> yeah, human- yeah absolutely yeah. it's about experimentation yeah, but, yes it's the humanness of that's that's there so hindi talaga magiging perfect yun Right. We apologize siguro doon sa mga uh, shortcomings na nangyari ng AI. But, uh, good yeah, the, well, the only downer I really saw was the the IT. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was uh, for some reason the setup. In, in day one. Day two was day one, day flawless, two. no? For yes. me. Yeah. Uh, in day one kasi may, may nahati yung tech. Mm. We have some important event manawag also. So, yeah. Yung mga batikan yata nasa Manawag. Oh. <laughs> Actually, I don't know how it could have happened. Eh, pero parang long story short, there was a main screen and then there were mga side screens. No? Yung mga side screens were synchronized. Yep. Pero yung main screen took a while no to to absorb yeah, the feed. no So, well, <laughs> technology. <laughs> <laughs> that means we cannot, biglang sabihin, no, we cannot just rely on technology. Oh, naman. Uh, Actually, the the life hack nga, if I were to speaking in day one, was just to ignore the screen, just talk. Yes. I think that's a that's another soft skill people 
need to develop parang 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 nakatuwa nga kasi recently I I posted something sa sa ano ko sa feed ko about uh, it's a meme marami akong mga memes eh and then lately the meme was uh alam mo yung meme na nagbibisikleta no I'm a data yeah, analyst yeah, yes. uh, and then As I, nilagay niya uh, sabi niya data skills are only uh, only data skills are important boom <laughs> tumba siya <laughs> because you need communication skills so that's actually one thing na nakakalimutan ng mga mga data people na you need to communicate your data oh, that's yeah. your big difference from the other quote and uh, the other scientists yeah. because if you're a data scientist, you should communicate your data to lay people, to layman term. You should communicate uh, your the things, the graph, the figures uh, to an ordinary pe- uh, people. Mm-hmm. Hindi siya pwedeng yung kayo-kayo lang nagkakaintindihan. Yeah, I, I don't know nga if it's a... I, heard, I hate using the term maturity anymore, no? pero that's one of those things. No? If it's a maturity thing. Kasi... I personally went through the same parang curve. First is technical lang and then you're enjoying getting immersed in all of the complexities. And then next is communication, maybe basic, pero you tend to be married to your to your slides. And then I think the lesson from the summit is don't be married to the slides. Be yeah, be able to talk naturally like what we're doing now. And then yung ano ren, tama ka eh. I have met people in the past who thrive in jargon. No? And and I remember during the summit, no, tinititigan ako nung head nung paku eh. <laughs> Kasi, <laughs> alala ko, he had to talk about parang this uh, governance framework. Alala ko, governance framework. And, and if you remember my talk, I said, yes, you need these frameworks, but we have to come from a, 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 parang a place of ano muna, clarity and simplicity. Sabi ko, tatlo lang yan. Fairness, accountability, transparency. Before you get all all this elaborate stuff. And then, nung mupo ako, tinititigil. <laughs> Kasi nauna yung talk niya na oh, super elaborate. I mean, I mean, there's nothing wrong with what he said. Pero I think, I think he got the point eh. Kasi there is a tendency. And I, I'm not even like completely in the academia. No? I'm only a part-time lecturer. It's fun din kasi to be complex eh. <laughs> you know, pages and pages of stuff. You know, means you just enjoy it and then you realize, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to deliver this to someone or someone has to use it and it's practically unusable, no? Ang dami mga ganyan ngayon, mga mga frameworks here, frameworks there. And I again, speaking from my own experience, you can get lost in it eh. Parang ano rin yan eh. Parang a beautiful mind eh. Parang okay, all of these interesting st- uh, things and then later when you try to parang broadcast it ang hirap kaya yun yung naging lesson ko parang i have to be able to put myself in the audience shoes na if in the first few minutes hindi ko na gets yung pinag-uusapan wala na zone out na ako <laughs> maganda naman na may framework uh, yun nga ang usapan namin at least you have a framework to look at for yeah. pero at the end of the day pag bringing down mo na siya sa institution. Yeah. Sa college. Even sa classroom. Hmm. Hindi na dapat framework tumitingin. Hindi ka na dapat sa framework. Tumitingin ka na sa simplest sa ano bang ibig sabihin ng framework? Sa'yo. As, right. as a person. As a someone that's teaching. And ano yung ibig sabihin ng framework sa mga estudyante mo? More. Mas, mas importante. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng framework sa mga estudyante mo? Kasi kung hindi mo maibaba sa ganong ganong paraan, parang wala yan. Very nice symbol. Yeah, yeah. And ano rin eh, if you think about the very essence of, this is where I, I love getting philosophical. No? Sometimes some people hate it when I do this. Parang, <laughs> uh, some people. <laughs> anyway, so when you look at the essence of machine learning, particularly to mga large language models, I mean, really getting into the workings of, for example, transformers, diffusion, um, or or even good old autoencoders. It's my one of my favorite modeling, autoencoder. Because you have data, you encode it into a small space, and then you decode it back to the original. But it's that small space that's the key. No? Para siyang ano, TCA, no? so modeling. You, you flatten a very high-dimensional data set into something very small. And that's the key, no? Yun yun eh. 
your ability to flatten complexity into a 2D plane explains everything, eh. Parang ganun, eh. So, I go, oh, nga, no, that's what it is, no? Kasi people kind of get enra- enamored with neural networks kasi yeah, it's very very far very powerful very fascinating and it it evokes complexity but actually what it does is it simplifies yun yung pinaka root ano niya function niya kaya yung something that's a complex picture makaklassify mo into 1 2 3 4 5 or cats and dogs everywhere you go machine learning is actually a study of simplicity or simplification parang sa math no? simplify so I don't know. Baka, baka ako lang. Pero uh, we have a way to go pa. The way yeah. the, the way we're teaching. No? Which brings me back to you. Parang, na, I don't know how many people know, but you basically pioneered the, the bachelors in data science no, in UST. Um, UNC Prof. Rico. No? Can you talk a little bit about that? What was the start of it and how you went uh, about it? The start it? of it was... I, I, well... The start of it is I get fascinated with machine learning, data mining, way back 2013-2014. Okay. Uh, some undergraduate students from La Salle. La Salle. Yeah, looking for the R econ finance. They're looking for a statistician. Okay. Not an analyst, not a data scientist or anything. This statistician that could work into the data to their to their thesis. So mm-hmm. I don't know what's that. So I told them, okay, uh, let me look at your paper. Give me a month. Ah, so you're the consultant. Yeah, you're the consultant. stat consultant. Yeah, stat okay. consultant. So give mm-hmm. me a month to, to learn about it. Then a month. <laughs> Try to learn about it. And I said, uh, okay, I think we can work this out. And I was fascinated how this thing is different from the usual stat that I use. Yeah. Then I meet you guys. I meet Carlo. Carlo Panti. Carlo Panti uh-huh. in UNP. That's I think that was your first uh, Industry Academy Summit. Yes, yeah. Okay. Then um uh continue pa rin. Uh from 2014 I keep getting a, stat- uh, a statistics project. This is project mm-hmm. about data mining and machine learning. So I don't know how to code by the way. Uh, I code a bit, pero I'm not really that. It's, not, mga, your, it's not your core skill. Uh, yeah, okay. pero may mga, uh, at least I know how it works. <laughs> Was this, ano, R? Python? Ano ba? Uh, MATLAB? R, uh, Mat- R? R and Python. So I do MATLAB in the first. Okay. Uh, but not on the machine learning side. So I look for softwares that are free. Pero naman eh. Mahal nga lang. Oo. Oh, oh, SPSS lang eh. Kaya yeah. puro, puro bootleg yung gamit namin dahil. <laughs> SPSS. <laughs> so, nagpa naman ako. Nag-rapid minor naman ako. Ah, rapid minor. Yeah. So, nag- nice. I, I, I did rapid minor. Though I do also SPSS. Kasi nag... Yan. Uh, then, I continue. Tapos naging training consultant ng Strand Asia which is hmm. the SPSS provider in the Philippines. Oh, oh so you taught job. SPSS as part of your yeah. consultancy. Okay. Right. Yes. Uh, even now, every now and then, the uh, tinatawag ako ng Strand Asia to give a uh, lecture para sa clients nila how to use SPSS. Because okay. SPSS also have a modeler. Yeah. They have also a machine learning built in. So yun, uh, then K-12 come. <laughs> oh, nga, no? K-12. Okay. So I was from the College of Commerce and Business Administration before. Then in 2018, I was transferred to the College of Science. Okay. Good thing. Kasi when I transferred to the College of Science, I'd go, boom na boom na ang, ka, ne? ang data science. 2018. Anong year to 2018? 2018. Okay. So okay. sabi ko, so... I even I asked Carlo again to come to US. Come to UST. Uh hmm. introduce AAP to the college. May, a- may AAP na noon, kaka-form pa lang. Yeah, kaka-form pa lang. Hmm. So introduce AAP to the College of Science, sabi ko. Then That's why uh others may say na they are with AAP as an academic institution to be rather than us, but we're the first official 
It was academic. always it was uh, always UST from day one, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. And I think from the time I met you in 2016, never. Mm-hmm. Hindi ko hindi ako nakamis ng meetups and and from events. the inception, ano? Oh, uh, so I know nung hindi pa siya hindi pa siya association. Actually, I don't know how many people will remember or admit it. Pero there was a, an aversion ah, to AAP back in the day ah, from schools. Except UST. UST Except was the UST. first. Oh, yeah. Parang ayaw makipag-associate ng mga schools sa, oh, who are these people? They're not even academics. <laughs> Fast forward later, I remember getting a criticism from some member that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, literally, nag- nagsara na yung company. Na AAP is just full of academics. Sabi ko, what? <laughs> you were not there from day one. I <laughs> Yeah, tama. Oh, sige, sorry, going back. Uh, 2018. Yeah, t- so yun, nangyari. Uh, Nagkala na mawa, AAP. Then sabi ko, we need, diba, the one of one of the vision of AAP before was to have this human resource, data scientist, mm. data analyst. Yeah. Sabi ko, why not? So I propose it to, to the team. Way back then, that's Dean Ramos, John Ramos. Okay. Then sabi niya, okay, since pre na post mo, ilid mo. <laughs> <laughs> You've chosen your fate. <laughs> Dean ng CS. Ng CS. Uh, 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 then, Doc Che, uh, pick up the, the the idea. He asked CICS and College of Science mm-hmm. to create a group build a group and create a program. We follow the EAP framework, yung data engineer, data science, data... The analyst. professional maturity yeah, framework. maturity yeah. framework. Yeah. But for the College of Science, we're targeting two uh, data scientists, data analysts, at mm. least. That, uh, CICS before has uh, CS and I major in business analytics and data science uh, their aspect of their specialization. So, nung nakita nila yung framework, sabi nila, sige, we'll go data engineer. engineering. Buhay pa yun ah. Kasi I still see graduates of uh, yeah, uh, business na. analytics major and ano something. Matatapos oh. na by next year. Ah, they're not gonna entertain anymore. They're going to Because uh, magka-third year na yung first yung first batch namin. So, ah. the time we offer the data science, okay. uh, kinat na rin nila yung uh, data science and data analysis. Because okay. it's a corporate, it's a, it's a Redundant. Redundant. And the two you know, uh, the two colleges offers uh, data science and analytics. Ah, okay. so this, it's not just offered by the College of Science. Kasi That's yun yung fascinating. Mandate, yun yung mm-hmm. sinabi ni Doc Che sa amin before. No, uh, we'll, we'll just have one program. Well, Para data, everyone in uh, one place. Parang yes. ganun. Okay. Was there a difference um, from a curriculum standpoint between the two tracks? Yeah. Uh... The track that we had was quite beef up in mathematics and statistics. So, yung sa CS, okay, compared uh, to the, compared the specialization. To CS, uh, specialization. Kasi, uh, yung mga CS is more on the CS talaga. Okay. Okay. Not on the, kumbaga, uh, mga two, three, four subjects lang yung nadagdag para mag specialize sila ng CS, ng DS. Hmm. Hmm. So, that's it. Then, come pandemic. Oh nga, no? Tumama yung pandemic. 2019. 2019. So Pero started... UST was a member already. Yeah, okay. 2018. At the start. Oh. We're a member at the start. Yeah. Uh, sabi nga ng officers, I think we are the oldest member. Natama lang, no? Being the oldest school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, that's it. So, 2021, before I went for a sabbatical leave for my data collections or my dissertation. So, na push naman yung program. So, we're na, right now, we have second year na yung first batch namin, but third year next year. So it's yeah, a, how time it's, flies, no? I remember yeah. addressing the inaugural batch last year. Last year, oh, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So, Was that the first thing that happened? Parang sunod-sunod eh. I remember giving a talk and then addressing the, the batch. I don't know which came first. And then we met with Dr. Peralta. No. Uh, you address first the batch. Yun muna. And then there was then a talk. Then you have a talk. Yeah. Actually, dalawang talks nga yata. Eh. There was an uh, ethics one and there was a math one. 
Yes. And then we met Dr. Peralta. Yes. We then we had coffee. Yes. And then the <laughs> then the design thinking then, and all the other stuff happened. And then ito na. Then na, ito I summit na. na. Amazing, no? I imagine me. Bliss. Parang wala lang, ano? Parang... <laughs> so I remember we were having coffee in that Starbucks sa UST, di ba? Wala nga small, inter- wala internet. small room, wala internet sa likod, di ba? And we were saying, paano, paano natin gagawin to? You know what? Let's just propose something and then see what sticks. Remember that? Yung sinabi, mm-hmm. Let's see what sticks. And then it stuck. Okay. Okay. Sige. It, so, it, it, it came a good thing, naman. Now UST is looking at uh, giving some uh master courses in artificial intelligence in artificial intelligence oh and we want to replicate that also in analytics kasi uh at any domain naman analytics could be to be there it's in, it's universal it's mm-hmm. universal i think that's the reason why other would say na analytics should not be another course diba mm. because it's universal but Parang stat. <laughs> stat should not be you know, a standalone thing because it's part of everyone's thing. Well, it depends, okay. I think. It depends. That depends. So mm-hmm. now, but UP school statistics is present. Uh, the the statistics program of PUP is there. Mm. So we say, um, no, I don't I don't think na hindi naman kailangan. Baka kailangan. I'm actually wondering uh, why stat doesn't fully embrace data science already. Parang there's still a divide. Oh, I'm a statistician. I'm a data scientist. I think the big difference lang naman is one is more tech heavy, yeah. data science, while statisticians are, you know, I I know the math or I know the stat regardless of the technology. Mm. Parang I don't know, might be a might be a small thing. No? Actually, ut- usapan namin ni kanan. Ah, uh, mabalik ako. Usapan namin ni Carlo yan ng first meeting namin. Ah. Mm. Uh, Kasi wala pa namang program before. Wala pa nag, nagbibigay ng data science. Ng data science. Hmm. Then comes the master courses in different universities and different schools. So sabi namin is, uh, nag-usap kami, so which should be the first thing? Is it that mathematical and statistical thing foundations or the domain or the programming? Right. So me, as, as, as a math, person, sabi ko, math and stat should be there first. <laughs> Bias eh. <laughs> well, I think, fundamentally, all of this stuff is mathematical. And, I think the bigger issue is whether you do the math first or not, why people are averse to the math. I mean, some are, no? Some aren't. Parang ano nga rin yan eh? I don't know if you know the trivia. Nagkaroon ng BSIT. Kasi dati CS lang, computer science. CS lang, yeah. Uh-huh. Kasi, dami na tatakot sa math. <laughs> so, the BSIT is the watered down, quote-unquote, sa math. But it's practically CS with yeah. less math, no? It's funny, no? Parang, what's the downside if you don't take the math seriously? I guess that's a better question. You know, parang you don't know how the car works. You're just driving the car. Parang yeah, ganun lang uh, I guess. Parang, uh, okay, uh, you just you just let the program do itself without knowing what it does. Ano ginawa niya? Yeah. Para na nangyari yun. Uh, you don't know the assumptions. Yeah. Parang everything is okay. So, naghihintay ka na lang ng, ng sasabihin ng, ng software. Na... Parang it's a black box. It's a black box, yeah. Press a button. Eh, Ang importante, uh, for me, uh, at least, uh, the importante is the explainability yeah. nung, nung algorithm, nung process. Uh, that's very important. Yeah. Uh, let, that brings me back to to one of, of the things na sinabi ng isang... Uh, we have also, again, yung tulad ng inatinan na last year na nag-address sa mga data scientists namin. So we have one data scientist, which is a friend of mine also. Mm. Maganda yung coach sa dulo eh. Sabi niya, uh, uh, clients will not look into you knowing how to do SB, uh, net neural network or SBM mm-hmm. or, or logistic regression logistic or whatever. At yeah. all. Uh, ang, ang tinitignan ng, ng client is how, how can you uh, explain to them 
how to what, to improve what, their process. So, yeah, what, what's uh, the outcome? No? Uh, what yeah. the outcome? Oh, at the end of the day, it's still how can you minimize the cost? How can you up, maximize the revenue? Yun parin na usapan. Yeah. So kung hindi mo may tawid sa ganung paraan, kahit na napakagaling mo siguro sa programming or sa neural network and all machine learning, wala din. It's useless. Yeah. Useless. Yeah. I didn't know you were in the commerce uh, college before. So you have a business background, in other words. Yes, um, yes. Uh, so I think it, it, yun yung mas madali sa akin kung bakit ako na-appreciate ko yung machine learning and data mining and the entire thing on data science and analytics kasi uh, I taught in business before. So I'm teaching operations research uh and other OR, no? OR and other mathematics related business courses. So mas Mga six alam sigma ba yan or short of six <laughs> sigma na no? Parang ganoon. Hindi naman, hindi naman. This is statistics. Yeah. Ay, uh, magkano. So mas kita ko na yung applicability niya. Ako naman I, I also well as 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 you know no my background is actually accounting yes. but I never became an accountant so I come into this conversation from the accounting world so in a way it's a parallel to yours my favorite accounting is management accounting which is explaining the Explain, business uh, I hate cost accounting I hate tax accounting <laughs> <laughs> the mga mga hardcore bean counting stuff pero management accounting oh my god uno ako don business finance uno ako don ah saying kasi it's like it's explaining causality eh. parang okay because your inputs is like this your output is like that so that's where i came in and i remember always wondering why we didn't have more statistics subjects in accounting which in accounting. is you know if you think about it should be natural um i appreciated stat only nung nag operations research na ako sa college so like, oh, okay, so this is what it's for. So I had a horrible stat teacher, <laughs> siguro. So all the complexities of you know regressions and t tests. Bang nag OR na ah yung palayon. That's what it's for, and it's always the case, no? Na it's explaining the why. No. Anyway, what I was gonna say is, if I had the tool of choice, it would be the spreadsheet, <laughs> Excel. Because it's accounting. Yeah. Eh. Ah. So my my challenge to me uh, to myself was always if I cannot convert this fancy thing into a spreadsheet. I don't understand it. <laughs> and syempre, nung neural networks na, medyo mahirap-hirap. But I did actually figure it out. In fact, I want to do nga a vlog on that. Eh. Let's do a neural network on Excel. Not because it's the best place to do it, but it's just a, it just clarifies no, how it works. I, parang, I want to watch that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kasi parang na-enlighten ka bigla eh, you know? Na parang, oh, so that's how it classifies it. Yung pala yung ibig sabihin ng mga hyperparameter. Kasi nga, when you hear the the jargon, the jargon, yung mga backpropagation, mga ganyan, ano ba yun? No? Ah, actually, talking about that, I remember once upon a time, kasi Excel has its built-in stat package, di ba? Yes. So, uh, so it has a linear regression. So no problem. Linear regressions are fi- uh, fantastic. Pero, but then the, the logistic regression was such a mystery, no? And sabi ko, I'm not going to bend over backwards and resort to R <laughs> or or even SPSS. I got to figure out how this works. And buti na lang, I found this book by by a guy named Conrad Karlberg. I love mm-hmm. those books. And it showed me how a logistic regression should work on an Excel sheet. So nung nakode ko yun, sabi ko, shit, that's it. That's all it takes. I'm all still wondering up to now why it's not a default, no? Kasi classifier, madaling, uh, madaling mag-classify. And then, that was the gateway drug na to neural networks for me. And so, I go, okay, so that's how it works. Kaya, nung naalala ko, kino-conceptualize namin yung MABA sa UAMP, ako sa kusi, ano nun eh, Prof. Brenda, we have to be able to break up the black box and show the students Kasi even if analytical leader, yun naman ang peg nila, diba? Yeah. They want to build analytics managers. Ang gusto nila. You can't be a manager if, you do, if you're clueless about yeah. what the uh, stuff on the ground is. Stuff. So it's stuck to me. Pareho-pareho. Eh. So you'll know, uh, yeah, another gas-gas na word is expert. You'll know a real expert versus a fake expert. If someone has the patience to break it down into yeah. simple, you know, simple pareho. language, and that's how you can, ano, you can understand, you know, complex uh, concepts. By the way, Doc, uh, I am trained as an education. 
So BSE Math. BSE, okay. Uh, Yun pala. So tell me about that, no? What what is the the theory of education pagdating dito sa <laughs> data science? How does it ano kasi mukhang hirap din tayo producing more teachers, diba? Uh, for for data. Yeah, um sige, sabihin ko muna sa akin kasi I I I'm from BS then like master's ako na math. Then bumalik ako sa PhD, edu- math education pa rin. So, when I'm doing this this dissertation of mine, this is actually my third topic. <laughs> yung dalaw- ibig sabihin ng dalawang topic ko. Naka t- nakatatlong hops ka na. Okay. <laughs> no, that's good. Multidisciplinary, no? Uh, the, yung dalawang topic ko is but uh gone to the ground. <laughs> Oo. But uh nakita ko na walang wala masyadong educational data mining. There's no edu- hmm. educational data mining here in the Philippines. That's a good point. Uh, learning analytics ay isa lang yung nakilala ko from from Ateneo. But learning analytics per se, walang nagpo-pursue. So sabi ko, oh, okay, probably this will be my niche. <laughs> Is it because we lack educational data also? That's one. Uh, mahirap kumuha ng educational data. Uh, if I would give, uh, kung, that's why I it took me two years, more than two years to to gather my data. Make sure of, uh, I know the data privacy law is a good law. But, but it's so, abused for re- against research. <laughs> <laughs> so, naman, I think there should be something to be done in the data privacy law. Para ma magkaroon ng mas maraming research on on the data available especially in in PRC in CHED in DepEd in education itself in the in the institution itself na kailangang ma-mine yung mga data kasi nandoon lang yung data ay eh, sayang ang dami nating dapat patutunan dun sa sa mga data na yon but we cannot kasi nga sa data privacy law so yeah i've cool. been itching to do a number of papers on just little things, no? Like, kunyari, ano ba yung penetration of certain skills in certain locations? And, you know, s- simple things. Like, does the depth ed concentration of classrooms per capita mm-hmm. actually predict proficiency in whatever? X, no? And just to measure how effective the curriculum is, no? I don't know. Things like that. Sana, sana ma- ma- mabuksan nila yung data para doon. Kasi, uh, I think there was a clamor by DepEd to help them. The only way for us, like people like us, to help them is open your data so we can look at the data, we can analyze the data. Diba? So, yun yung isang bagay na sana gawin ng DepEd. Hello, DepEd. <laughs> yeah, most likely they'll be listening to this eventually, you know, but... Uh... And it's a shame nga. And we used to have a colleague there, diba? si Yusek Ablan, mm, who's mo- no, moved on na from DepEd to DTI. To DTI. Uh, actually, nakita ni, na, nag-usap kami ni Yusek, ni Asek na ngayon, uh, about it. Sabi niya, uh, Art, sana yan yung kanko before when I was there. Sabi yung project, niya. Sabi no? Yung project. Sabi niya, sayang wala na ako doon. Yeah, it's usually the beginning of a very long uh not debate or topic na parang the education system of the Philippines dot 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 haba <laughs> habang mahaba-habang topic no lots of things to talk about balikan balik ako dun sa house the data science in education uh, and ano yung mga ano yung structure ngayon in data science one thing is uh, institution cannot compete with uh, organization or company to hire uh, a data scientist to become uh, professors or teachers. That's one. That's a very big problem. How can we compete to big organizations which has this data scientist to an institution? Even even uh, UST cannot compete with the science. So, ang pwede lang makuha natin is probably uh, people who likes to apply yung mga gustong mag-apply diyan uh, i'm we're hiring <laughs> you know what <laughs> ano, na, no? this is a sensitive thing for me because this thing came out in the LMI remember the LMI mm, yeah 
na there is a job for analytic trainer. In fact, it's junior and senior academic, academic. ang pangalan niya. And we just completely ignore it. When I say we, AAP, and pretty much the industry. Because they're all too focused on the data scientist, the data analyst, and blah, blah, blah. Not think, not remembering that someone has to teach all of these people. Yes. And that's a job. And if we're not teaching the teachers, kaya nga, I'm very, very happy with the way in conversations with you and uh, Dr. Peralta have evolved. Talagang UST is taking it very seriously, the pedagogy, design, learning instruction, and how to integrate AI. I think that's the key. Eh? Kasi if you produce more teachers, you produce more students. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a logic thing, no? But people kind of forget it, no? And then there's an opposite parang blind spot that I'm also seeing. Kaya nga, yung skills framework na, pin- na pinopropose ko is far simpler. You know, everyone's focused on the builders of these technologies, eh? data scientists, data analysts, and we need those. But mm-hmm. what about the wider audience? Right. Users, leaders, leaders, and then the teachers also need to come in. Uh, and then pag hindi mo nabuo yun, you'll, be, you'll have another one of those uh which is actually happening now no i don't know if you're aware there's a growing glut glut na in data analysts who have taken mostly career shifters though yung mga fresh grads ironically have a better chance of getting hired compared to shifters just shifters oh, oh. maybe for many reasons yung mga fresh grad mas mura so companies are willing to take a gamble pero if you're a shifter you're probably more expensive by default. But even if you floored the price, parang companies don't want to take a gamble eh, on them. Eh. And, and I think the glass ceiling is two years of experience. If you don't have two years of working experience in analytics, you're just there, no? floating around for a long time. And I find that tragic. Because that's the evidence of our success in right? AAP. There are a lot of take ng analytics, na shift. And then they get stuck in that uh, proverbial ano, training hell, they call it. You're stuck in training hell. You keep getting more training, 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 and then you don't get any work. <laughs> Oo, kasi napag-usapan din namin ng isang kakilala nating dalawa when during the AI summit. Hmm. Uh, so sabi, namin, sabi niya sa akin, uh, can we partner with UST to have the training? Sabi kong ganun sa kanya. Ah... Uh, why not ask the industry, the one that will absorb, ano yung kailangan nila? Correct. And that's what we're going to train. Rather than we train, tapos pagpasok naman dun sa industry, hindi naman yung pala yung kailangan nila. So, sa yung effort, both from your end and our end. Even sa end nung, nung mga tinuruan natin, sayang din. So, sabi niya, so he'll look at that. Pero to be fair din, ah. Oh, I don't know. I don't think it's fair at all in any case. But nothing may... is fair. No. <laughs> yeah, life is not fair. Maraming kulang on many sides. Okay. So on the on the industry side, they don't want to take a gamble if they don't know the CV. So if your CV doesn't have, you know, recognizable employers. Wala. It's the same manner as being in a top school. <clears throat> Some employers don't take a gamble on anyone below the top three, top four, top five. I think to a certain extent, that's softened up already. So you have, for example, schools like Mapua, PUP, highly in demand. Lalo na dyan. Sa, ano. So okay, good. The boot camps naman, samot sari mga boot camps here, you know, right and Depende left. sa boot camps kung saan ka pumunta. Oh. But with the boot camps, I find that they're all primarily focused on coding uh-huh. and tools. The not so much on math, although you could argue math is a subset of problem solving. There's no emphasis on how how do analysts think, and I don't know how many analysts will agree, but um, it's a research job. It's not a it's not a dev job. Many people take data analyst as, as a uh, dev job. As a dev job, parang web Pero dev. Naman. Oh. I mean, in some cases, it's a, I mean, and there's now a new emerging occupation, your data engineer. Yun, maybe that's closer to a dev job. Dev, yes. Yeah, but even then, even a data engineer needs to know problem solving also, and no one teaches that. <laughs> <laughs> Kaya nga yung tawag dyan, internships, siguro, mentorships. 
and work experience. Kaya companies don't take a gamble. If you, they don't know where you work, they cannot ascertain whether you have the problem-solving skills. So there has to be another way of showing that uh, parang ano, characteristic. Now, on the fresh grad naman, dun sila namimili. Kung ano yung mga schools. Kasi some schools have good you know, uh, practicum and the subjects. And then not, that, that doesn't even consider yung mga emerging areas of concern like ethics, safety, uh, which in a way is also not necessarily coding. No? It's more of governance. It's a bit philosophical nga if you think about it. So if you add up everything, para siyang mga puzzle pieces that don't fit together. <laughs> may mismatch. No, it's, there, it's not interlocking uh, properly. And supposedly, this is the new occupation that's driving demand. No? The sexiest job na daw, the 21st century. Pero how it's shaking down 10 years later, parang it's not a perfect scenario. No? Yung pakiramdam ko. Ikaw, what do you see on your end when it comes to these things? Uh, yeah, nakikita ko yung, yung mga career shifters more on. Kasi even sa mga blog posts, tsaka even sa mga groups, they're looking into more on the coding side. Mm-hmm. Which for me is uh, uh, bias ako kasi uh, I'm not more into coding. Pero that should be your least problem. Your 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 problem should be how are you going to attack problems? How are you going to analyze situations? Yeah. Uh, dito siguro papasok yung controversial na discard. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Yeah. So, more than discarte. Eh. So, when you look at the problem, how are you going to go about it? Uh, how are you going to get your data? How are you going to make insight about the data? Those things. Yeah. Uh, at mahirap, kuminsan, mahirap ituro yun, Doc. Mahirap talaga. Hindi mahirap siya minsan. Wala, oh. Hirap talaga siya ituro. <laughs> Not like with the coding. Pag coding kasi, it's, it's one, one stroke. Yeah. Yun lang naman yun eh. Diba? But and and then if you look at all of the programming languages, this was a for me a a, a moment at one point in my career. Because nung una takot din eh, you know. Uh-huh. And then my actually my first formal, I was coding at the age of six, so I was not a stranger to typing up stuff. But when it came to professional programming, ang first offing ko was VBA, <laughs> sa Excel, no. And then, so which is macros, then you tweak yes. it. And then SQL for databases. Yun talaga. And then, nung nag-venture na ako into the actual software development stuff. Uh, PHP, JavaScript, Python. I actually learned those three sabay. Because uh, I was coding up web apps eh, uh, at some point. So, sinabay ko yung tatlo. Only to realize... They're the same thing. <laughs> For loops, if, uh, if then statements, switches, arrays. They're the same thing. Sabi ko, iba-iba lang yung pagka, ano, pagka syntax. Sabi ko, that's a big scam, I think, because people parang define themselves eh, by what code they, they know, di ba? They know. Oh, oh. Ako naman, nag-start ako mag-code. Nag-code ako nung nagtutupuro pa lang, pa lang ako sa high school. When mm. I taught in high school. Kasi we ano have... Yan? Fortran? <laughs> no, Access. Access? Oh, MS Access. I love MS Access. MS Access. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, uh, yung program... We're, we're... Nag-hire sila ng programmer to do the system of the school. Of course, they want to automate yung paggawa ng grades. So, ako yung medyo... You build that on an access database? Yeah. Yung automation? They... Yeah, yeah automation. Access. Yeah. So, ako yung kausap palagi ng programmer. Sabi, ha? so from there toto na mag-program. Eh tapos binigyan na ako na access ng programmer na Sir, pag ito yung nangyari, dito mo na lang tignan sa sa part na to. So open mo yung yung code, then tignan mo kung gumagana yung code. Uh, mm-hmm. So doon doon ako na natu- na na fascinate mag-code. Then Yeah, I, I had an MS Access moment then. So after VBA Excel, it was Access, then SQL, parang yun yung bridge. Yeah. And I like how MS Access is an all-around dev dev uh, development environment. Mm. I say it has a database. You can do the macro, the automation. Mission. You have a front end, the forms, yes. diba? Everything's there. So I'm actually surprised many people go. Mga analysts never touched MS Access because they start now with 
the Python notebook, the R studio, and they miss a big chunk of what would have been formative education. And many of them don't even know SQL. They don't know databases, which is a shame. <laughs> um, parang ganun, no? And then some of them don't even know Excel. I've actually met <laughs> data people who say Excel is for for noobs. Sabi ko, sige, padamihan tayo ng productivity. <laughs> you know, in fact, uh, we did actually have a project like that. You know, I don't know if I shared this with you. One of the biggest projects I that started me out no, as a consultant was someone who was trying to do something with Python and we just did it in Excel <laughs> and finished the project in one-tenth of the time. Hindi nila magawa-gawa. And then, gin- ginawa nilang namin production ready later nung natuwa na yung client. Kasi nga, ang bilis eh. Rapid prototyping. You have the all of the regressions that are done. Malit lang naman yung data rin. Hindi naman ano. And this is already after the Excel, di ba dati, 65,000 mm-hmm. rows. 65,536. Naalala ko yan. 256 times 256. <laughs> so, and then nung naging 1 million na yung rows. Tapos na. Dati, okay. yun yung MS Access eh, di ba? If, you, if it does not oh, fit yeah, in yeah. a spreadsheet, do you it put in it in MS Access. Yeah, you put it in an Access DB and then you can join them and now you have superpowers, no? Parang ganun yung dating. But still true today. I mean, they still ship MS Access with Office today. Uh, what I did, what I learned pala also is really rebrand na ni Microsoft yung MS Access into little things. Power automation, mm. they call it. Okay. So yung mga form controls niya, yung uh, tawag dito yung macros, yan, mga nagiging power automate, nagiging pa- of course you have the power BI suite. So it's just Microsoft making the, double the money on the same stuff. <laughs> Pero it, it really Ever was MS, MS Access. access? Oh. Kailan ko ba na-touch ang MS Access? 2008 ko pa last na... 08? Uh, oh, I did a lot of stuff in 03. MS Access 03 and then 08. 2010. 2010. MS uh, Access 2010. Actually, sa Excel, uh, yun yung isang kwan siguro. Lalo na sa mga basic education. Hmm. We, I, I do... Uh, give lectures para sa mga basic ed, sa mga elementary and high school natin. Uh, sa, lalo na sa public school. We do yeah. that for free. I have a group who give um, call this some training for them on not really just an Excel. It's basically on research. Uh, yeah. Alam mo bang kasama na kasi sa basic ed ang sa mga nasa public ang gumawa ng research para sa promotion nila. Wow. And That's one good. of their problem is like, uh, is the stat. Kasi nga mahirap daw mag-compute. Because they don't have uh, the tools, no? Oo, uh, kasi wala. So Excel na lang. Yun ang so Excel bridge. na lang. So, masabi ko sa kanila, uh, other than the add-ins ng Excel na na, na, na sa kanya, may isang add-ins eh na ginagamit. Uh, it's called real stat. Oh yeah, I like okay. that. Real stat for Excel. Yes. Uh, the third-party plug-in. See si Charles, yes. Charles, si Charles, Charles, Charles Zawin. Yeah, love his yep. website. Uh, no, oh, ganon website na. What? Akala mo hindi gan, hindi hindi pang add-ins. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I stumbled upon his work on my search for young ano logistic regression on Excel. I was just looking mm-hmm. for it. Where can I find it? <laughs> and he was one of the first. Problem yeah. yung yung package niya naka ano na naka naka VBA na package mm-hmm. na. So I wanted to break it open and do it manually. Yung kay Carl. No, Berg. yung yung mga yung mga bago niya ngayon is naka-open na. Ah, okay. You can good. scrutinize. Mm-hmm. You can so hindi siya BPA. Oh, kasi andun lahat eh. I I oh. I actually leveraged his work sa survival models. That's another thing that most people don't do anymore. Um kasi I love survival modeling kasi it's time eh. You're modeling time, how long before something happens. Rarely do people do that. Eh. Parang, ang alam lang nila, time series, no? And parang survival model is a, is a different type of time series, a different type of uh, regression. And ang ganda, kasi it's still surprisingly accurate. I don't know how it's accurate. I guess may, rip, may, ano talaga, may pattern talaga yung universe, no? Certain things are really recurring. And survival models show you that, eh. And, or at least it tells you this thing's moving a little faster than expected <laughs> or a little slower. Lalo na nung pandemic, no? Siyempre, there's a lot of survival models are based on health, di ba? Mga, uh, 
people getting well or people dying, mga mortality tables. Uh, yeah, survival analysis yun. Nagagamit din pala siya sa marketing. I mean, yun yung nakakatawa. You can borrow stuff from these other disciplines and you put it into business. Nagagamit pala siya. Yeah. Recently pala, may, may ginamit kami na coming from coming from business. Mm. Uh, gumamit kami ng class 3. Mm. Mm. Ng class 3. Para dun sa we a, a group of, of five of us during the election Right after the election, uh, we did a research. Uh, dalawang BBM fanatics, dalawang Lenny fanatics. Then I'm the one who's not who did not vote for any of political. Them. Okay, political. So our our research is more on uh, how the reasons of BBM supporters for voting voted BBM. for BBM. Okay, yeah. that's awesome. So we did that research uh, maganda yung composition niya kasi we have two opposing then i'm on the neutral side mm. and i'm the one running the data <laughs> yeah. so nat- when we presented to one of uh one congregation isa sa yung isa sa kanila sabi nila akala akala ko aatakihin niya siya na parang use wala sabi niya sabi, sabi ko ma'am inataki ko siya as if I'm just marketing. Mm-hmm. Because whether we like it or not, uh, voting is a marketing. It's style. a marketing activity. Yes. You're selling someone, di ba? Uh, you're selling someone. Hmm. So, okay naman yung yung reasons. Uh, we come up with five reasons why using uh, factor analysis, we come up with five main reasons Uh-oh. why they voted. Then when we do the class three, Uh, we come up with four group of people. Yeah. So yeah. interesting yung lumabas dun sa result. So na present naman namin na present nung isa sa mga authors sa isang uh, international conference. So siya na lang yung nagpresent. You, you know there's there's a niche field. I don't know if it's catching up called computational social science. Yung ginawa mo is would fall into that. That's so fascinating to me. Uh kasi it's probably where economics kind of stop short, di ba? Or maybe psychology, psychology. Where you can bring itong mga statistical models and apply it to behavioral phenomena, no? Minsan lang, it can get, ano lang, you can get, parang nasisilaw ka dun sa model and you ignore na what's happening in the outside world, no? Kaya yung, there's another field called econophysics, here's of that, <laughs> where it uses physics models for economics. I don't think I, it's actually successful. I know someone who did that in, in, the, Philippines, in the Philippines. Okay. I'm sure meron eh. Kasi at the end of the day, it's all differential equations eh, diba? So at some point, uh, so I'm sure every other physics model, uh, you know, can apply. Lalo na yung mga thermodynamics, yung mga ganyan, yung fluid dynamics. Yes. Ma- I think yung problema palagi is the data. Kasi sa natural science, ang gaganda ng data, you observe long enough. They follow oh. talaga, di ba? Mga patterns. Pero yung mga tao, gulo-gulo ng data natin. <laughs> <laughs> Pangit ng quality. So maybe there's a signal there, but it's blurred out by the noise. No? You have to find the, yung totoong pattern kasi lahat ito random mali yung pagka-capture pero yung totoong path nandiyan naman hindi lang siya kita masyado interesting And, no? uh, siguro kailangan din yung data maturity ng ng citizens natin yeah uh, that should be inculcated as early as in the grade school in the basic education yeah kasi how mature are we with the datas A uh, good example na lang na, na hindi tayo mature sa data natin is that we complain when uh, PSA get our data when they have the national ID, yeah. right? Yeah. But we didn't con- but we oftenly give our pictures and our fingerprints and everything to a social media pa- platform mm. just because we want to look great. <laughs> yeah, nga, we are the product, <laughs> diba? We're not the user, we're the product. Kaya ka walang binabayaran eh. Facebook uh, uses you. Or Twitter uses you. I, I know this also because I've been on both sides of the fence. No? Because I also use Facebook for market study, for for ads. 
talagang you're really using the data yes, of the users. Uh, no, you have to be confident, or it, you you have to sit well with that that thought. No, nakaka nakatuwa jan. Interesting. Okay, so I'm just conscious. No, we're nearly at the hour now, but we can talk forever. But um, <laughs> sorry for you, my dog. No, that's all right. From where you sit right now, what what are you looking forward to? Because parang ang dami pang nagde-develop no so you have your bs uh, data science curriculum running I, have you guys launched a masters are you planning to do that uh the bs data science would have a masters pro, uh component pro, component okay. so it, we when we build the the curriculum it's built to have a plus one program uh, plus one so if five years That's with masters great. yes uh, okay ganda nun. but the yun yung fifth year namin would be a masters by research Mm. So once you have the fourth year, you can graduate if you want. But if you belong to the honors class, you have an option to, to continue. go for another year, uh -huh. uh, continue your research, probably publish it. And after five years, you're MS. MSDS. Now, yeah, MSDS. Now, if we follow the PSF, which framework. will be launched, a framework, which will be launched, then uh, automatically you'll be... Because in the framework, you can only be named as data scientist when you are in the master's level. Uh -oh. So we, okay, we'll, we'll target that. Oh, tama yun. Kasi, well, ako, I'm, I'm very bullish. Uh, not so much about, you know, yung leveling and the credentials. No? Of course, people, companies will make mm -hmm. that decision. But but I'm bullish about research. As in, yes. if people are encouraged to explore the boundaries, no? See, there's so much research that can be done. No one's just yeah. doing it. Kasi walang incentive. No, there's no incentive. There's no funding. So while you're in school, you might as well do it. Pero I'm curious then what the the what the prospects are for a uh, for a professional researcher. Pero alam mo, doc, uh, it's not more on the incentives, eh, especially in the academy. Hmm. Tulad ng sinabi mo kaniyang problema is talagang the people from the academe wants to do research as much as possible for their, well, for their uh, professional growth also. Yeah. But the problem is the data. Yeah. Where are we going to get the data? Uh, it's a struggle for... for because for no one wants to share the data. Well, no open one data. wants to share the data mm -hmm. or even the data that should be shared cannot be shared by people. Like, for In example... Oh, then, like for example, data na lang ng PRC. They can't share, you can't share it, but that's government data. It should be open, no? Labo, they have no? to pay for it. Parang pag-asa lang yan eh. Naalala ko nung we did, did that dengue project. <laughs> they have to pay for it. And Rename ko yung resibo na yun. <laughs> 35,000. Yeah, they have to pay for it. And you have to ask the permission from... From the agency. For example, from, from the school. Like for example, I get a data from one school. Uh -huh. My my requests went up to the office of the solicitor general. Hence the, two, hence the two years <laughs> of of waiting for the data. So that was that contributed to the time, no, to produce uh, the research. Eh, di ba? Uh, when you do research, it should be timely. You know how other countries resolve it is you have uh, corporate benefactors of every major school. Now, of course, that has pros and cons. Pero at least you can produce research. Yun lang eh. Kasi wala, super, super cool lang yung, ano, yung throughput natin of research material. Yung problema. I think kailangan natin uh, yung ginagawa natin ngayon na uh, academe, industry, uh, collaboration. Though we started it na, I think dapat it it should be the default hindi siya dapat uh, for special interactions lang or special events lang it should be the default between the academy and the industry hopefully in our lifetime uh, match with natin yan. yeah actually there's another <laughs> player who could step up which is the communities i'm very bullish about yung mga there are these communities for data engineering ai uh, I think one one Gen AI community just formed. I'm going to be meeting them in a few days. Because they're self-propelling. Some of them run on zero budget. 
and they're also after free resources, free education, which is great. Uh, and in many ways, AAP started out like that. No, we were yeah. a community, and then got organized. I feel that communities are still the strength of, at least the Philippines, no, of the profession. So we have academia doing their part, feeding into the community. I think that would be great. Because everywhere else, public sector, private sector, para mahina. Another another group, siguro, is the NGOs. Um, or if there are NGOs that can be set up. Uh, who can support this. And that brings... Actually, Don, mas ma, from personal experience, mas mataas yung chances of getting published kasi the NGOs are more open with their data and it's usually for a social issue. Uh, yun, dami, daming social issues that are data-related. Like and like there's a, there's a very promising field in geospatial analysis oh, that can just... be used everywhere. You can use it for environment, climate, EJKs, <laughs> everything, human rights... There's always a good map. And then pag may map ka na, then it lends itself to, you know, uh clustering, networks, everything you, you know, you know yun eh. then it starts there. So it's amazing how how little kasi nga karamihan ng mga data, you know, analysts, they have a very business oriented outlook, yeah. diba? So they forget na there's actually more to life than business. So, Kaya nga konti ang kwan eh. Konti ang nasa Educational data mining. Yeah, that's an, that actually that's the biggest social impact sector. SDG two, ano ba yung S- education or Four three? Yata. Oh. Four yata. Oh, di ba? Yun yun eh. That's one of the top. No, after health, after hunger, after poverty, yeah. it's education yeah. <laughs> to solve education. Yeah. Okay. Sige. Um. Of course, we can talk forever, but. Maybe you have to save some for the next episode. Do you have any parting thoughts uh, to our audience before we close for now? Uh, yeah, uh, I think the data science and analytics is not dead. Others may think uh, if you're a career shifter, may just just like well, I'm not a career shifter because I'm not a shift ng career. Hmm. <laughs> shift <ba> ako? <laughs> But uh, for the career shifters, make sure na uh, you get your your training from reputable training institutions. No? Institutions. Uh, likewise, hindi hindi lang lahat is coding. Hindi lahat ng bagay ay uh, tungkol sa sa pagkukod at pagga, paggawa ng machine learning, data mining, and all ng algorithms ang mas malaking bagay is how are you going to make sense of this? Not just with make sense of it in the business thing, but more probably on how are you going to make sense of this data on how to improve humanity. At the end of the day, uh, this things happens because we want to improve humanity. So, at saka yung mga naghahanap ng trabaho dyan. <laughs> Plug it again. <laughs> again, I'm plugging it again. Uh, for those who, who would like to apply as uh, as uh, professor instructors for especially those who are in the industry who wants to uh, shift their, their stress from the office stress to another stress. To classrooms. Uh-huh. To classroom rather than uh, have it in another st- stressful event. Then just reach out uh, either to Doc, yeah, so can you could refer to me, or you can directly message me if you wanted to. Yeah, we'll uh, have uh, Prof Arts uh, contact details, maybe LinkedIn in the description, so people can reach out. Then I I I I hope that the Philippines will still be good. Uh, I hope that we can improve our our system, especially in data collection and uh, openness of the data. We need that if we want really to to move forward and then the data that should be analyzed should be open and uh, not because we will criticize but it's more on so that we can find the problem where's the re- the problem really is uh, that's the only way that we can diagnose our problem to get the metrics that we we need in order to to know where the problem is okay. so yeah <laughs> well said. I think that's a good enough place to end it for now. Thank you, Prof. Yeah. Art. Thank you. 
Yeah, and uh, see you uh, again see you in another conversation. <laughs> yeah, see you around. <laughs> Sige, bye-bye.